So I'm going to talk about social media. That's really my passion. Um, as Tina mentioned, I, I'm a digital specialist, so I handle a lot of different marketing um, activity for our company, uh, from display to email to um, search search marketing. Um, but for the most part, like my passions in social media, um, a little bit. Just uh, she talked about a little, a little bit about it. But I also own business, so I'm like a lot of you in some ways. Like I own my own small business as a photography business and I help manage some bands. So that really is my testing ground for social media. I use social media there to actually help, you know, hone my craft and how I can reach the right audiences. And I do a little bit of that to test in different new spaces as we move forward so that I can help uh, the businesses in our market as well. Uh, I'm gonna do a little um, kind of test. I'm gonna, if people feel free, please to yell out the answers if you know just to see what people know about social media and what they recognize. So it'll probably start easy and it'll probably go get, get a little bit harder. So tell, can anyone tell me what brand this is? <laughs> Facebook. Twitter. Twitter. YouTube. Google Plus. LinkedIn. It's going to start to get harder now. Pinterest. Snapchat, okay, it's not surprising that the younger people in the audience pick that out. Periscope, Flickr, Vine, Reddit, Tumblr, anyone know what that is now? <laughs> so this is new, I mean even this week, that's changed in a week, last week that Instagram had a different logo and that's now their new logo. Um, so it's constantly changing, there's so many places, I know that I would I would venture to guess that very few of you in the room have all of these for your brands. Uh, and maybe you shouldn't, you probably shouldn't for the most part, unless you can handle keeping up with it. Um, right now there's 2.3, with 2.3 million active social media users in the world. Uh, and Facebook is by far the biggest still today. Um, it's been there for the longest. It's one, one and a half billion users on Facebook. 70 plus percent people in the United States, adults in the United States, log in at least once a month onto Facebook. Uh, but some of the other things I think are most interesting on here, the 300 hours a minute are uploaded to YouTube in the US, um, which is kind of frightening, the amount of time that's being spent on there. I read somewhere, yet, I think this week actually, that the average viewing session on YouTube is 40 minutes. So people sit and they just can't get off the, off the, off the brand, so it's very interesting to me. But um, for people trying to reach younger audiences, Instagram and Snapchat are the place to be. Um, Facebook reaches kind of everywhere, but um, as you'll see in that, in that slide there, 90% of Instagram users are, are under 35 years old. Um, how many of you have a business page in Facebook? Almost everyone here. How many of you, there's 40 million of you out there that have business pages, how many of you are buying ads through Facebook? And that's a question, so one or two maybe, potentially, which is kind of in line, right? So it's only about 5% of actually those businesses are doing it. Um, the people who are not doing it, I think, are missing a big opportunity because the, anybody who has done it sees how much reach they get on top of their normal reach. So it's something to be looking at and ways of like how to do that effectively and inexpensively. It really does give you an advantage to being in that space, um, especially if only 5% of other people in that space are doing, using it effectively. Um, as all of you know now, or you wouldn't be here, that there is some importance in social media. It is important to be in the space. Um, if, if you can reach three quarters of the people in America, or the adults in America every month, and you can do it almost free, or not necessarily free, you're doing it in a time frame, your time spent, you almost have to be there in that space. Um, but all of you know you have time, limited time, resources, so how do you balance that time with the, what you need to get done with your normal business and your day-to-day -day operations, and that's, that's the challenge, I think. Almost all of you have probably done traditional marketing at some point in the past. If you have done traditional marketing, can you raise your hand? 
So all of you, basically. Um, one way reason to look into, into social media marketing as well is you get that organic from your posting and you get that reach when you start to grow your business and your followings. Um, but also it can be less expensive than some of the traditional marketing to reach that same audience or more. So main things to be thinking about when you're starting to build your brand or starting, these, starting out with social media um, is really having a plan. I think it's just like that with anything you're doing with business. You really want to, um, you don't want to just go out there willy-nilly and start posting and playing in the space. You need to actually have a strategy of what you're trying to do. Um, what actually sets your, business, your company apart from other companies? What's your value proposition? Um, because that's where you, the kind of posts you want to be making or what shows you're, you're better than the other, your competition or what sets you apart so that you get more engagement with your posts. You also want to make sure you tie any social networks together. Um, an example would be, um, you know, Facebook, you want it to link back to your site. You want to be driving back to your site as often as possible. If you have a website, hopefully you do. Um, the reason that is, is again, it's your business. You want to drive the traffic to your brand and be able to maintain that brand. Um, and you can maintain the integrity a little bit better, but you also gain the traffic, which improves, improves your quality score, which improves your SEO. Um, does that, I don't know if everyone knows what SEO is, but SEO is search engine optimization, which allows you to rank higher in search so that you're found more effectively by your customers and by the people who you're looking for. Um, having, a brand, having all of your brands kind of work together and having kind of a same message and same voice across your brand is really important because as with any marketing, you, don't want, you want consistency and repetition and frequency in front of your uh, customers. Um, coordinating this, the social media is, can be done in several different ways. You can post in different places with the same message, or you can actually use some, there's some tools out there that allow you to post across different brands at one time, which saves time. <laughs> um, I can mention a couple of them. One's called Hootsuite, um, and one is called, that I use a lot, is called IFTTT, which is a, if this, then that. And you basically set up recipes that say, if I post on Facebook, now I want it to also post this on Instagram. Um, using a blog, if you have a blog, or using your site to continue to, use, to drive that content. It actually, if you have a blog or a place on your site where you're writing content, that's great for your search. But it also is great for your social media because it allows you to have good content to post across your social media. Including call to action, you really want people to actually take action, share, um, drive engagement with your content. It's a place where you can actually speak to your customers on a, a little bit less formal way and allows for more social engagement. And you actually do earn business that way a lot of ways. Um, having them tied to your website, and I mentioned having it going both ways. You want to be able to drive people to your social media as well through your website. Questions about that so far? Anyone? Oh, okay. So I know there's a lot. I've, I've already shown you like 6, 10, 12, 15 different places that you can um, be in social media. I don't expect any, any of you to be in all of those spaces right now. So I would say what you should do from a strategic standpoint is pick one or two that make the most sense for you. So if you're looking at a business that's more B2B related, I would drive, I would say LinkedIn would be the first space you should be. Um, if you're looking at more B2C, I would say Facebook is the space you should be. Um, honestly, I think Facebook is the space you should be, everyone should be on Facebook because that's where you reach the most. Um, but if you're specifically driving messages on B2B, LinkedIn's a good spot to be in as your secondary. Um, whatever you want, to, whatever you decide to use um, and, and are comfortable using more and more of, um, you still want to always have great content. You want to have the content's the driver. It's always going to be the driver. If you have great content, people will engage with it. Um, Facebook and all these platforms make it difficult to even reach the people who follow you if your content isn't good. If your content is good and people engage with it, more people see it. Uh, and, and if any of you are familiar with Facebook, and I think you all mostly are, you have a news feed, you'll see content that's being engaged with a lot more often than you will see content that 
you may see it and no one does anything with it, Facebook will bury it really fast. You won't see it again. So the content is going to be the main factor always moving forward. So again, planning and strategy. You just want to make sure you're planning out your content um, so that you do have good content. You don't have to over post. Um, I, um, you know, again, I'm going to continue to beat on the planning, 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 because setting up a plan and a strategy makes things easier for you. Um, visuals, both video. Video actually is the best in Facebook, for example, but um, also in Instagram, also in Snapchat, which I doubt many people are going to be in that space. Um, YouTube, obviously. Um, visuals, just on posts in general, really do resonate with people. Um, and it allow you to post across different platforms. Um, also, posting about what's relevant right now in your industry is valuable because it keeps you engaged. It also lets your customers know that you're, you're relevant. You know what's happening in the world around you and in your industry. Uh, this is one thing that is a sticking point for a lot of people, and a lot of people are a lot of concerns for people is how do you manage? I'll call them the trolls, and I don't know if everyone's familiar with that term, but there are a lot of people out there that will post. They'll troll, meaning they'll do, post something negative about you. They are, they're doing it to kind of get a rise out of you in a lot of ways, or a rise out of people on the internet. Um, People get reviews, and you see negative reviews, and I think that's commonplace. Um, a lot of people are concerned about that because your brand is out there and that, that stays out. How do you maintain your positive brand image? And should I delete negative posts? Should I do those things? And I would say that you actually should not be deleting negative posts from a standpoint of that's you actually will increase your trolls and the people following you at that point. You're best served by responding. Um, either privately or publicly to the to the negative comment or the positive comment. And actually, the positive comments responding is really valuable too because the more they're seeing you as engaged. Um, and again, you know, you're monitoring what you're doing. You're seeing which ones are doing best. You're um, you can actually get a lot of data from social media. Almost all of the platforms allow for time of day posts. This tells you what's the most effective time of day for you to post when. Your audience is most engaged. Um, and using that information to improve the time of day and the types of posts you do is always valuable. So social media paid advertising. So Facebook is a giant business. They aren't doing it really for free. I mean, they're trying to make money. And they $8 billion, I think, last year in paid advertising on Facebook. Um, there's a positive to that and a negative to that. So Facebook is making it, because they're a business, they're making it a little bit more difficult for you to reach. Even the people who want to reach, you want you to read, they follow you already. They want to see what you're posting about. Um, I would say, and I was talking about this with Joe earlier today, that you know, each post generally you're going to reach about 10% of your following. Now, maybe it's because only 10% are online at the time the post happens. Maybe it's because there's so much posting going on that it gets through their feed really fast, and now it's out of their sight. Um, and some of it is because Facebook knows they want you to pay to get in front of the people. Uh, that said, Facebook is, compared to a lot of other traditional marketing, very inexpensive comparatively to reach large numbers of people and to really target that group down. Um, and you can target in any way you can think about um, targeting from a digital marketing way. So I can target demographics. I can target um, age, geographic, location. I can target behavioral, meaning what kind of things they like, things that they'd be most interested in. You can actually build what's called look-alike, custom look-alikes to people who are currently on your followers. You want to only target people who look like those followers um, who don't currently connect with you. You can exclude people who are already currently followers. You don't want to reach them. You want to reach new people. You can take lists. If you have email lists, you can actually, this is kind of big brother -ish and scary in some ways, but you can take email lists that you have and currently own, load them to Facebook, and match their Facebook profile to their email or their phone number. You can then target those people specifically. I mean, you can get super granular if you have a list of you know 10 people and you know 
here's an example. I'll give you a quick example. I own a company that has that does tickets, and I want to give an offer to. If you bought tickets to this first show, I'll give you an offer for the second show. But I don't want everyone to know that I'm doing this offer. So I only target the people who bought tickets to the first show. I match them, and I give them specifically an offer. I can say, um, I mean, I can go down to one person, really, and say, hey, Tina, I know you bought tickets to the show. Thank you. Here's $5 off to the next show if you pay, use this offer. So you can get super granular with list-based targeting. Um, you can target by location, meaning I'm in this location right now. I could have targeted before the meeting and said, you know, one mile from here, I'm hitting people on Facebook with a message about there's a social media conference thing going on right now. Come on over. Um, so there's a lot of ways that you can go about reaching your audience you're looking for. It just really depends on what your goal is. Um, but I would absolutely be remiss if we don't talk about using paid social media at some level because it certainly is a huge driver of growth and audience. And then big, and really one of the most important things that people sometimes overlook is really looking into the data of what you get, the results of what you're doing. Each post, learning from your, learning from your own posting, but learning from your paid campaigns. Um, and being able to really measure your return on investment, make sure you're getting your value back out of your, either your time or the money that you're spending in paid advertising. Um, so again, this is kind of a recap. You know, it's cost effective, helps you push traffic to your site. We'll blow through some of this. Uh, quick, quick do's and don'ts. Um, you want to be active, but you don't want to overdo it. We just talked about this. Um, you want to make sure your message is the same across the channels. I kind of talked about that as well. Uh, customer service, you want to be available for people. Uh, and, and being original and fun, I would say, it's funny, I talked to you all about the insurance earlier, and you said, well, how do I post about insurance all the time? And, and you don't want to. I mean, you want to post things about your business, for sure, but you also want to be fun and engaging and be a real person, have a voice. Um, that kind of thing really does resonate with people. And think about what kind of brands you engage with if you're engaging with brands online. Um, the ones that have a little bit more fun are probably more likely to be somebody you're talking with or wanting to talk to. Things you don't want to do, um, and, it, and people do it anyway, but you don't want to necessarily like your own posts. You don't want to um, share too much content or information. Not necessarily content, but too much information. Um, you should use it as a networking. Um, you don't want to be spammy, meaning you don't want to every day, every hour set it up to send 30 posts about insurance a day. Um, you don't want to delete negative content comments, actually, uh, or ignore your customer reviews. All right, I'm going to do a quick thing on each platform, which I talked about with the donuts, and then I'll just open it up for any kind of questions you may have. So just quickly what Facebook is for simplicity, you know, it's a brand builder. Um, it's really the most engaging talking back and forth type of platform that you can have. Um, great for stories, testimonials, and reviews. It actually will help you in search engine marketing as well. Um, and it's the big, it's the big space. Um, Facebook also owns, so I mean, really there's two I would say there's two giant social media, or really internet giants really, right? There's Google and there's Facebook. Google owns Google Plus and, and YouTube. Facebook owns Facebook and Instagram. And then if you go to like, number three would be Twitter, which owns Twitter, Vine, and Periscope. Um, but the two big ones are really Facebook and Google. Twitter is much more, um, news driven, I would say, almost. Um, very fast, 140 characters, you're, they're real short snippets, people are just quickly going at things. But I would say Twitter is probably the most dangerous for a business, meaning, so Facebook, if someone writes a comment to you or writes to you, they expect you to respond to them within like 24 hours. Instagram is probably like six to eight hours. Twitter is like an hour to two. So if you can't be really active in Twitter, I would recommend not being in Twitter because 
you do not want, what you don't want to do is to have a negative effect with your customers. If people are coming at you with questions or customer service issues, you want to be able to be responsive, especially in Twitter, because they expect you to be there. Um, much more dialogue driven. Instagram is all visuals for most people who don't, who know this. It's a, it's photos. Um, you can actually write a lot of in the comments and you can almost make a blog out of comments, but, um, Heavy visuals, very young actually. I mean, 35 I said 35 and younger is where you can. That's where 90% of the people are, are. And actually, people who are teens are actually saying that it's like the, it's their their favorite. Um, it's the fastest growing platform over the past three years. And again, um, from a paid standpoint, Google or Facebook owns Instagram, so they make it very easy for you to actually advertise in Instagram, whether you have an Instagram account or you don't. Yes, sir. And with Instagram, is it true you can only do like primarily have to manage it from the mobile side? You do have to primarily, or you can use something, you can use some like Hootsuite and things like that where you can do some of the other things, but it is mainly a mobile device. It's a mobile platform for sure. Thank you. That's a good question. YouTube, second biggest a search engine in the world, which people are often surprised by that. The first biggest is Google, second biggest is YouTube, also owned by Google. Um, and it's the third most visited website in the world, which is also sometimes surprising to people. Great way to maintain a, a brand and like be able to keep your message in front of a brand. Um, again, S for search engine optimization, it's valuable because Facebook, or because Google owns it. Just, 40% of all American women are on Pinterest, which I thought was an interesting number. That's a fairly large number. Although the fastest growing audience on Pinterest is men right now. Um, again, very visually driven um, platform. A lot of photos, a lot of uh, recipes. There's a lot of shopping that goes on there. A lot of e-commerce directly goes on that space. Um, still relatively smaller than some of the other larger um, platforms. LinkedIn, again, is more B2B, uh, business-driven, um, job seekers, job um, employment companies, but also a lot of B2B and um, expert setting, um, expertise is set forth in that area where you can actually really create yourself as an expert um, to the brand, to brands in your business and outside of your business. So, um, just as a kind of a wrap up on a lot of this, like there are a lot of businesses that are doing a lot of these different things and that's terrific. And, um, I love to have these kind of conversations with people who are doing it. Uh, I also like to just talk about like, you know, some of this can be very overwhelming to people. There's a lot to do. Um, certainly a lot of it can be done by yourself or by your company and you can kind of create positions for that. But you also have the ability sometimes to reach out to other partners who can help you with that. Um, certainly that's something we like to do, um, either on a consultant level, but also on a, we can help sit down and like walk you through kind of helping you with your strategy, but also in how you reach the most people with your audience and your target audience. Um, so these are just some of the reasons why, you know, why people have chosen to do business with us and work with us on that. Um, this is not necessarily a sales pitch, it's just, although it kind of sounds like it. Um, but it is something that I'm super passionate about, so I love to hear what other people are doing and what they're trying to do and where they're seeing success and also where, um, where they're having trouble reaching what they want to do. So um, certainly love to hear um, your stories about what you're doing. Any questions right now? Yes. Can you go into a little bit more about Google? I'm not really sure. sure. For Google Plus? Um, so Google Plus is funny because it's, as I mentioned slightly earlier, that it's not a space that a lot of people are using um, from a social media standpoint, although there are some that are. Um, what I generally recommend for people is I would say you should build out a Google Plus page because there's several benefits to that. One, like it puts you on the map with Google. It actually puts you literally on the map with Google, so that when Google Maps, when people are like searching for your business, you show up on the, a pin on the map if you have a Google Plus page. Um, 
It also helps you with search because Google is going to want to elevate their brand stuff ahead of anyone else if they can. They can say they don't do that, but come on. Um, and but what you can do is you can you can set up Google Plus to what I always recommend doing is set up. It's one that you don't have to necessarily monitor as much as you would have to monitor like Facebook, but you can set up Google Plus to mirror what you post in Facebook. So you can post it in Facebook only and it automatically posts in Google Plus the same thing. I recommend doing that because it's just doubling your amount of content out there and it doesn't take you any more time. You don't have to even log in to do it. Um, and you can do that through something called IFTTT, which um, is, I mentioned it, it's if this, then that, and it's basically you set up a recipe that says, if I post on Facebook, now post it on Google Plus for me automatically. Um, so I certainly recommend putting, being in that space whether you spend a lot of time in there or not, I don't necessarily think that that's the top priority. Although I, there are people that would argue that the more time you do spend in it, you're in an advantage because there are fewer people in the space. You're more likely to be seen by the people who are there. I, it, I guess there's a, it's kind of the chicken egg on that. So like in Facebook, 100 million people are there, or 1.6 billion. To be seen, it's a lot harder without putting money behind what you're doing. Whereas Google Plus, you may only have you know, 300 million people there. So right there, you've already put yourself in a better position to be found with the 300 million who are there. Do you know what I mean? So I mean, I think you could go either way. I personally recommend Facebook being your top priority because you reach the most people um, with just about any business, I would say that. And Google Plus should be a secondary. If you have plenty of time, all of them are valuable. I mean, I, I really believe that. Hangouts? Yeah, hangouts. Yep. Does that impact at all? Uh, it, it can, and it can be really valuable in a, a space to talk um, to directly to um, your customers. I, I'll mention, like, so I mentioned I, I manage bands, and I have a couple of bands that we do Google Hangouts once a month with fans, where we do, hey, we're going to be at rehearsal, and we have it open, and we have an open forum with 10 people can talk to us while we rehearse. It's great for us on that, like we use it. And um, we're doing a conference in, is it June? June 16th. 16th. And, here. and it's going to be a Google Hangout with actually Google. <laughs> so Google's, like our, our main contact with Google is going to be doing a Google Hangout with, with anyone who wants to connect here with us and be able to talk back and forth about what's happening with Google and how you can improve your business in Google. Uh, I think just activity would probably, just the more activity because it gets, it, it is another piece of activity on Google. It's archived at some level. You can record those things, those hangouts so that you kind of have that content to revisit. So I think there is value in it. Um, there are several places you can kind of do that same type of thing that's not Google Hangout. Um, Skype does things like that and there's a lot of different other platforms for it. Sure. Yes, sir. Um, as far as blogging goes, yeah. um, what's the best platform for blogging? And kind of a follow up to that. Yeah. I have a friend who uh, puts out um, basically a blog every yep. week on a website. What would be the best way or what, which platform would be the best to continuously bring that to Instagram? Uh, I mean, I certainly think still. And it's funny because it's changed over the past 10 years, but WordPress was originally a blogging only platform. Uh, now WordPress is probably 90% of websites are built using WordPress. Um, and I'd bet at least half the people in this room have WordPress websites. I have four WordPress websites. What's great about the WordPress websites is they are built for blogging and for SEO to help you be found in search. Um, which is what you really want to be able to re get as much reach as possible. I would suggest you know using WordPress for that as a simplest from a simplicity standpoint, um, but then sharing content out to different platforms, um, and you can do that you know through any of the platforms really. Tumblr is another blog actually. It's more of a visual blog, but it's well, it's I mean it allows you to do anything blogging wise. Um, it's less used than it probably was a couple of years ago, but it's still an available space. Um, but I say you're just as valuable taking that blog, sharing that 
blog post to Facebook, which is still your biggest one, or if it's a, you know, if it's a business blog, you should be posting it on LinkedIn. Um, I, I would recommend, if you're trying to reach the most people and specific type of people, putting like money behind a boost or money behind a post to get to the biggest reach. Um, but I would always recommend the actual content living on your site or your blog and sharing that link to that because that drives uh, what's called a backlink to your site, but also drives more people to your site, which is what you really want is, I, I mean, I love Facebook. I would rather I make the money than Facebook make the money. Personally, by driving more people to my site and having the ability to control my message more than I can in Facebook. Does that make sense? Other questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I think you're, you have to think about it that way, really. Like how, if I only have like 20 seconds with somebody or 30 seconds, how do I get what I need to say in front of them? And so you need to start right away with what you want to be said because you may lose them right away. Um, and that's the same thing, with, again, with SEO and search. You want your important keywords and things in the first like paragraph of what you're saying, if you're writing. or um, you want to draw their attention somehow right away if it's video or photo. Um, I do think visuals do help. Um, now, can you say what you want to say through the visual? That's the challenge, I think. Um, but certainly, like, yeah, it is, it is more and more difficult to keep people's attention. And Twitter, I think, and social media is actually, I think, a huge factor in our lack of attention span in some ways because it is chunks of really fast information and how fast can you see it or not. Um, I think it's affected that video games and everything else.